What's good, ladies and gentlemen, bitches? Welcome back to the channel. We are here recording post live from the mothership. <laughs> this is episode 16 of the Real Madrid career mode, and we have to bounce back. If you missed episode 15, you need to go and check it out. Spoilers incoming. We had a big Classico, El Classico, a big the Classico. That doesn't make sense. We had the El Classico against Barcelona. Big, big game. We ended up losing in a game that we took the lead and we should have left with all three points to be honest and we ended up leaving the ground with absolutely nothing. Massive game, huge impact that could have on the title race towards the end of the season we are coming in now. And we have to bounce back, we have to bounce back immediately and we have to make sure that we don't continue to make any mistakes. The f uh, fixture list is really piling up and you can see the effect that it's having on our squad with the back four that we had to fill today completely. Uh, not not a back four that we've probably ever filled, fielded uh, so far this season with a lot of players coming in. Marcelo starting, obviously. We've got Fernandez and Lucas Vasquez all in there at the same time. We usually have at least one or two of our more experienced defenders. I say more experienced. Marcelo is about as experienced as it gets. But, you know, may, uh, maybe a better word would be, you know, our, our first string defenders in there. But... It's definitely a team. That's the thing about Real Madrid. You know, even when you're missing players, even when you've got your second string coming in, they should be good enough to get the job done. We still have better players on the pitch like Tony Kroos, who's done a brilliant job to pick out Rodrigo, who tried to hit that far post and unfortunately wasn't able to keep his shot on target. But you see right there, you can see I'm getting more confident, more comfortable at, at uh, you know, just just different angles of hitting the ball probably earlier in the save i would have ended up overcompensating like i had previously and and ended up hitting it to the near post but was able to almost hit the target on that far post right there with rodrigo and celta vigo came back down the other end and almost scored a beautiful goal of their own but we're continuing to push to try and get something in this game and cruz found benzema who dropped deep as he has many times this season and slides in rodrigo who is not gonna risk it Plays it across to Vinny, and Vinny gets his name on the score. She opens up the scoring for the day and puts us 1-0 up against Celta Vigo. Big, big uh, goal in this game because you can see both teams going back and forth. Uh, both teams creating chances, creating good chances at that as well, and obviously playing away from home. You can see the first goal in the game and the crowd get into the game. You allowed the, you allowed the fans to, you know, really uh, get behind the team, and it, it can make a big difference, but... Getting that first goal, we make sure that if we had any nerves, we settle them. We give ourselves the opportunity to bounce back, like I said, and uh, keep it going. We tried to go with a long ball again, but unfortunately, not as good as the one they usually are. They gave the ball away to Vinicius, who plays it into Rodrigo. We got a man over again. It's saved, but unfortunately for Celta Vigo, it fell straight to Tony Cruz, the man who started the... No, no, no. That, that was the other attack. My bad. But... It fell to Tony Cruz. The keeper made a, a relatively good save, but you know, I mean, he done well to get his foot to it, I guess. But um, unable to to, to divert it, it kind of come off the back of his heel, and it did fall in a very fortunate position for Tony Cruz, and he's able to just tap it into a pretty much empty goal. The keeper was coming across, but he just couldn't get there fast enough. Tony Cruz puts us two 0 up, and we're in a very strong position. You see, 57 minutes in, you know, where we're coming down towards the end of the game, and. Got a two-goal lead. Chance to make it a three-goal lead as the ball fell for Benzema. It feels like he had all the time in the world right there to put in the back of the net. It's still not out of play. Put into the air to Benzema. And unfortunately, the Celta Vigo defenders were able to clear that one away. And uh, it happens again. They just they, they keep shooting themselves in the foot in this game. Benzema had missed one earlier. Wasn't going to make the same mistake again. He took a page out of uh, Rodrigo's book right there. You know, Rodrigo, Rodrigo had a chance earlier. Wasn't able to hit the target. Second opportunity came his way. He said, you know what? I'm going to square, square it to Vinny. Same thing for Benzema. He had a chance earlier. Wasn't able to score it. Another chance. You know, he said, I'll square it to Vinny. And Vinny gets himself on the score sheet again. Puts us 3-0 up and all, all, all but kills the game off completely. We played really well in this game. But like I was saying, man, uh, Celta Vigo was just shooting himself in the foot. Every time they tried something... They, uh, they just end messing it up. And you see, again, they're running into trouble as they turn right into Rodrigo. Rodrigo has a man on the left in all sorts of space. And Marco Asensio steps up and hammers it home off the bench to get himself another goal. Brilliant finish. You, you can see it. You can feel it. You can feel my finishing improvement. One thing I have noticed as well is 
a lot of the time just I uh, maybe maybe not so much in situations like this where you're one-on-one -on -one and you really want to but a lot of the time I'm thinking just hit the target right? just hit the target especially with how suspect keepers can be at times sometimes I'm just thinking hit the target and you know uh, that, 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 that's kind of that advice that you get in real life sometimes if you play a lot of football I'm sure you've heard you know just just hit the target and it might veer off either side and, and go in you know so that's something and and it, it, it seems to be working but a lot of times you see even them I'm finishing the finishing we went route one that time we got a simple flick on and Asensio was in behind off the bench getting himself a double a brace right there and again nice finish got one on his right foot got one on his left foot not as far into the corner as it could have been but you know what I'm saying that's a good finish that's a good finish we tucked it away but big big win in this one wouldn't have expected to come away such big winners with how the first 20 30 minutes of this game went but that's what can happen and I, I, I feel it I really feel it in this game like there's this little it's it, it, especially with the smaller teams like I said like they they seem to panic under pressure and I kind of like it like as soon as you amp it up a little bit especially if they're trying to hold out and then they concede that first goal a lot of the time they can't handle the pressure and they crumble I don't know what it is but you could feel it and it doesn't really seem to happen to the bigger teams it really seems to be something that's going on with the smaller teams a lot of the time and like I said, I, I really, I, I like, I like it. Uh, but that was it. Us getting a win, bouncing back in the league, getting ourselves a nice three points and a lot of goals as well, you know, to boost the confidence and, and make ourselves feel good moving forward. But away from La Liga action, we're heading back into Champions League. The, 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 the grind just don't stop. It just don't stop. But this is how we lined up. Very strong squad. We had Sayunchu in the middle and Alaba on the left, of course. Still no furl on Mendy. We had the midfield trio, the, the Trinity, you may call them. Uh, Tony Cruz, Casemiro, and Luka Modric right there lining up. And we obviously had Benzema leading the line with Pedro Neto. And Vinicius Jr. either side of him. It's a strong, uh, strong Chelsea? Strong Chelsea squad, as you can see right there. You could just see by from the photo with the players that are lining up for them. They got a lot of dangerous players on the pitch. Players like Lukaku are there. You know, players like Pulisic. They've got a midfielder Kovacic and Kante. Chelsea just have a, a dangerous squad all around. And they play that five at the back that could just be so hard to break down in this game sometimes. And I, I mean, listen, if you think the five at the back is hard to break down regularly, hey, when it's time to break it down on manual, oh my God, it's, it's 10 times harder just because, I mean, you just have so much less space to work with. Like, it's, it's so hard. Obviously... We have a meeting of two formers right here as Kovacic was denied by Courtois. Obviously, Kovacic, former Real Madrid man, and Courtois, a former Chelsea man, coming, uh, coming head to head right there. And Courtois comes out on top for this one. But we're going to see who comes out on top in the end of the game and the tie as both sides are going to, both, both players are going to want to come, uh, going to want to come out on the winning side. And you can see, even at the Bernabeu, Chelsea, they were coming at us. They were the better side in the, the first half, especially you can see as Reese James getting himself an effort. It was deflected by David Alaba, but again, Chelsea just come forward again into the second half now. Nothing is changing. Chelsea were really, really good in this uh, game. They, they were hard, like I said, hard to break down. They created a lot of chances. Brilliant. They, 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 they put so much pressure on us. They actually started to see these defensive highlights come out. Eden Militar, I'll tell you about how brilliant he is all season that's the type of stuff that he brings out absolutely phenomenal block from the brazilian center back and he's just flying i think he's like at 86 87 overall now he's just he's he's a beast but uh he's having a hard time his hands are full with players like lukaku up there for the chelsea uh attackers and you can see it we it's been all chelsea in this highlight package and thibaut courtois has had to be on his a game to keep us in this one right now and chelsea just continue I mean, they, they have to find a back of net. You come to the Bernabeu and cre cre create this many chances, you have to take one of them because this is where we're dangerous. On the counter attack, we have players coming forward. Pedro Neto carries the ball. His pass is blocked. It's played forward again. And it's a beautifully played ball into Karim Benzema, who had our first chance of the game, our first real sight on goal, 71 minutes in. The Real Madrid fans obviously not going to be happy with that. But look, Chelsea were good, man. Chelsea probably from playing this game are probably going to be one of the tougher teams to play in this game just especially because of their formation and stuff and the players they have really hard to break down but we did grow into the game as Tony Cruz 
found Vinicius Jr. in behind. Brilliant chance. Vinicius Jr. tucked it away. And I told you Chelsea had to take their opportunities because the way that we've been playing since I took over is dangerous. It's dangerous. It's a Kevin Gates out of that boy. Dangerous. Hey, it's dangerous the way we're playing because the counter attack can hit you at any time. It can hit you at any time. And if you don't take your chances, like I said, like, hey, look, if they took all their chances and we come and hit them on the car attack one time, then it's 4-1. We're still losing to nothing. But when you don't take your chance, that boy stings when it comes down the other end. And you're 1-0 down all of a sudden. And your expected goals is 4. But we ain't going to get to expected goals, bro, because I don't like that. <laughs> if there's one thing, expected goals for me just highlights the, the problem with modern day football. Like, I, I'd never even heard of XG before I played FM uh, 20, no, 2021. I'd never even heard of XG. I seen that stat. I had to ask chat, yo, what's XG? They said expected goals. I said, what? <laughs> That's a stat now? I don't, I, still, I don't even know what that means. What does that mean? Expected goals? What does that mean? By a, by a minute, one free nil. Expected goals, eight. What? What does that matter? What does it matter how many goals you're expected to get? I don't get it. I'm gonna I'm a stop because I could rant about this for I could rant about this for the rest of the video. And you don't get no comment. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Expected goals. Those are the type of. This is why I tell. I say like I always say in videos, and you guys always question it. Why I always say like I don't believe in. Not necessarily don't believe in luck, but I don't like that when when people say oh we lost we lost one nil but we deserve to win. Like I don't believe that. I believe in football. The only thing that I really make an excuse for it's like deflections that's like the only thing that i really consider like oh you had bad luck right because like if i shoot and it's going to the corner flag and it deflects and going to the back of the net that's luck right look this other shit ain't luck bro you have 10 shots on goal we, we, we lost one nil but we deserve to win man we had 10 shots they only had one it's like what so how did you deserve to win you had 10 shots and you didn't score none of them that don't sound like you deserve to win they had one shot and they tucked it that deserve it sounds like they deserve to win <laughs> you know football is all about scoring goals if you can't score a goal you don't deserve to win that's why i hate this xg shit bro game ends nil nil you had an xg of five yeah we should have won you probably should have but you didn't <laughs> right xg i don't get it but uh yeah um i don't even know how we got I, I, it, we didn't see xg once i don't even know how i got onto this topic but we got two wins from two in this video somehow we got that win against chelsea i don't know but a big win it is, especially considering we kept a clean sheet. That's massive because I, we, we, we was under the cosh for the first 75 minutes of the game, as you guys saw. But we're into the third game of the episode. We're playing back more La Liga uh, action and we just have to keep the pressure on. We have to keep the pressure on because that loss against Barcelona, like I said, it was absolutely crucial. But like I said, time and time again in this, uh, in this series, in this save so far, as long as we got Thibaut Courtois in the sticks, I am confident that we can win any game and keep a clean sheet against anyone because the saves, you've seen it. You guys have seen it from episode one. From episode one, I, this guy, I say, I say from, from episode one, he's been making great saves, but in episode one, he also did make a big clangor. But, but still, since then, this boy has been making amazing saves episode after episode he's so good in goal uh and 55 minutes in is still nil no thanks to him really you see we put in pressure on getafe uh with our own offense but they have created their own chance especially that one with ines now earlier and uh getafe did come forward again and we're trying our best to create uh to stop them from creating a clear shot on goal but unfortunately they did get that look on goal but they still had to beat Thibaut Courtois again. They took it first time. It's a, it's, it's a really good effort, but Courtois just gets a big left hand to that one to keep that one out. Danger is not fully averted, though, and we did decide to make some changes. Karim Benzema actually came off, and so did Luka Modric for Rodrigo and Marco Asensio. See if we can uh, get someone to make a difference and really give us the breakthrough in this one. And... Getafe feeling a little bit, uh, you know, the confidence is obviously growing with them being uh, nil nil still with us at 60 minutes. So, you know, going for their special, special uh, goals right there. We switched the play onto the other side. Nice little ball right there from David Alaba. I think it was a cross came into the box and it was a huge opportunity from Yo Luka Jovic who has been red hot in recent weeks and he really, really should be hitting the target at least from there especially I mean that's what that's almost his bread and butter right there winning getting them headers he was completely unmarked in that box and he should have done better he had a chance to really uh justify him being put put on for, for Benzema right there would Benzema have scored it we don't know but he he, he hasn't 
It was actually Marais. I, I, I didn't know Marais was playing in this game. I wasn't watching during the the the, the lineups. I was I was having my uh, my uh, uh, XG run. Uh, but again, you see, uh, you guys, it just it just it just comes n it, time and time again. Thibaut Courtois with them saves. We get in behind right here. It's Rodrigo taking a shot. And when luck is on your side, luck is just on your side. I'm feeling like Domino. Uh, X-Force. <laughs> when it's on your side, Rodrigo steps up, gets himself another goal. It's crept through the legs of the keeper. And hey, we went route one again. We went route one again. When your plan A ain't working, sometimes you got to have a plan B. We went up long. Luka Jovic flicked it on. Rodrigo was in behind and the keeper just has to be doing better than that. Getafe are going to be absolutely devastated for them to lose a game in that manner when the keeper, I mean, really, they, play, they played really well in this game. They played really well. Getafe were a problem, but now that we're ahead, they had to push forward and they were going to leave some gaps in behind. I tried to find Luka Jovic, but he obviously just doesn't have the pace and his careless defensive play again as they've played it right into Vinicius Jr. No one's really stopped him. It's pulled back to Isco, who also came off the bench and the game was wrapped up in a nice little bag with a burner bow bow on it saying, welcome. I hope you enjoyed your stay. I bet they didn't, but hey, it is what it is, bro. You come to the burner bay, sometimes you're going to deal with some heartbreak, you know? Uh, they hey, they shot themselves in the foot two times, man. They shot themselves two times. They had they had they had they had two bullets and they shot themselves two times. Russian roulette, but they chose it. Uh, poor 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 ball out the back right there. They're giving it straight to Vinicius Jr. You know, one of the worst players you would want to give the ball to in a situation like that. They played it straight into his feet. It's eventually found its way to Isco, and Isco was able to get his first goal of the season to grab us three points. You see, Barcelona came out with a big four-one win as well. So a hey, it's the race is on it, it's on you see we have chelsea to worry about that's gonna come in the next episode we're in april mid-april we're coming real close towards wrapping this season up and we're still fighting on all fronts we have the uh, carabao carabao the copa del rey final which is gonna be a live game that's gonna come up soon we have obviously la liga to worry about which is just tightening up and we have champions league football to worry about we are sitting top of the table at the moment by one point ahead of barcelona right now as they push us and just look at the table look at the table it is it is toy like a tiger up there man you know look, 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 we, we we got between us and atletico madrid you hey we might as well throw real sauce that in there as well man there's five points with seven games left to go separating the top Five. It is so close up there. It and 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 the thing is as well, a lot of us have similar teams to play in our run-ins, man. It's gonna be so tight. It might even just go down to the vote to the wire. It could go down to the very final day. Uh the problem that we're having, we have to be on our game because against uh Barcelona at least, uh I'm sure we're good against uh Sevilla and Atletico. And Real Sociedad, well, we did we did get smashed by Real Sociedad. But I'm sure with the other teams, especially uh, Barcelona, I know that they have the head-to-head -head advantage. I'm not sure how it works in La Liga if goal difference comes into play before head-to-head -head, or if head-to-head -head comes in before goal difference. But either way, we don't want to leave it up to that. We don't want to leave it up to that. We have to continue our form. We have to keep this one-point gap and, and, and at least keep this one-point gap. And if we can, we need to expand on it. But... It's getting hard because we have so much football to worry about. Like I said, we have Champions League football. We have the Copa del Rey final coming up. It's it's tight. It's tight. And these teams are not giving up. And look at Sevilla, man. Sevilla, shouts out to them. Make sure you join us for the next episode, man. Don't miss any of this save because it is lit. It's going down. Uh, appreciate y'all for leaving your likes when you come in. Like I, I know, I, I know, I didn't want to have to talk to you about that. It's a little bit of awkward conversation. We don't want to have to have that conversation. Like, but yeah, you know, since I, t you've been leaving your likes at the door, and I appreciate it. Just hang them on the wall, and I'll sort them out later. Right? So appreciate you guys. Like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, peace.